Well, at least it wasn't zero that time. Jeez. Yeah, might as well, I suppose. Um, so the idea um, that we had was to go through each game and just and play it and just talk about like what the rules are, um, so that people who haven't been introduced to the wonderfulness of this compendium can figure it out. Should we, um, should we make a separate video of it? Uh, I can cut it out later. Okay. Which I will do. Um, is there a, is there a first one? Michael, are you there? Which one comes first? What's, what's the beginning of the cycle? <laughs> talk about things before we start, because maybe this game goes pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> this one is pretty hard to explain even before ordering, aside from the basics. Like... Before ordering? Before or during. Oh, before or during. <laughs> I see. Um, I, I can explain the basics, but... Yeah, you have little guys, and they run around and shoot each other, and you collect power-ups. And you shoot each other better. <laughs> yeah, and eventually the power ups go blinky again and they can be stolen or secured. Um, so when you touch a building, it turns your color, um, and you can't touch it, and then it's, it's yours permanently until it's blinky. You have a little HP bar, um, your shots wrap around, so setting up um, vertical things like this can be good, except not if you do it to the exclusion of playing the game well, and then you take all the damage like I did. Also, it's less useful against someone who has the right power up because I can just walk around. Maybe we should play it a couple times. Yeah, that was yeah. the plan. Yeah. Um, and they blink on the screen for a second at the beginning of the game what they do. Um, <laughs> See, there, there are some things that make you do more damage. There are some that improve your movement. That one on the left is helping you generally. Um, I have wraparounds, so I can go sleep a little bit or or fill it. Um, there's also ones that make you shoot multiple bullets, like out the side or out the front. And now we've been stalling in a for long enough that third party enemies are showing up to fight us. They can't shoot, but they can run up to you. So in general, um, probably bombs and additional damage are like the best ones. Bombs are pretty crazy. They make every, every something shot be big. You can see the ones that they have. Like, those do a ton of damage if they manage to connect. Um, like so. Uh, um, this one makes you faster. Um, piercing one. Okay, so Chang Chang is like a simultaneous movement chess variant sort of a thing. Um, you have timed moves at the same time, and it's random which piece you get to move. Um, so there's pretty interesting kind of mind games during the turn about watching what they're doing and reacting in real time, and then also um, trying to set up your pieces so that. Um, you know, uh, well, so one thing is that there's a limited sort of um, non-replacement in how your pieces are chosen. 
so you're less likely to get the same piece like twice in a row, or um, I, I forget the exact algorithm Michael told us. I, I like, think it was half, half of, of them. After half of them, it resets. Yeah. But you can never get the same piece twice. Two times yeah, that's true. You can't get the same piece exactly twice, but you can, and and you always get half the pieces at least different before it can be one of them again. Um, and you got to either kill their king piece or all their other pieces. Um, we should probably play. Yeah, I, I should read the names of them and learn them because I have different names for oh. the four of them. <laughs> Alan the Pawn. Yeah, Pawn and King are easy. Scroll faster through it. Yeah, there's no button to scroll through. Those See, are I rooks, call Rooks right? Lancers. That makes sense. I, I am kind of approved of that different name. And I call these Knights because they're awesome. Is there a how you pronounce that word? I don't know. I don't like it. I call those rooks instead. Interesting. They seem more rook like. Do they? I Except like that it. they're weaker than rooks. Yeah. And bishop, I agree with. Yeah. Okay, that's all of them. So you always start out with the king move, which is like, I don't know, it's pretty boring. Um, and then, first moves, at least in our, as we've sort of figured out what to do in this game, they seem to be pretty. Um, in a positional, not too aggressive, um, because your best pieces, your bishops pretty much, are, um, since they have the most power to kill two different things at once, they're probably the best, um, they start out kind of in front, um, which makes it risky to move them forwards, because that puts them into harm's way. Um... Also because they just don't have... Because bishops start in front, you can't really attack them with other bishops, so the bishops don't have good early offensive power. Um... So the way that attacking works, if it's not clear, um, is that while you're moving, your attack is turned off. Um, which is like your, your things are kind of blinky while you're moving around. Um, and so you can walk, if you walk through an enemy piece, it doesn't matter. Um, and, but if you want, well, sorry, if your attack moves through an enemy piece, it doesn't matter, but if you move through an enemy attack, it does matter. Um, and they win. See, I, I demonstrated down there how you die if you run into an ah, attack. Ah, yes. <laughs> um, and that's the idea. You want to play one more? Yeah. Just start playing, yeah. Um, so these little squares that you constantly shoot, um, you have no control over it. Your only controls are up and down. Um, they kind of glom onto each other uh, as they collide and into big ones. Um, and the bigger they are, the more points they're worth when they cross the other person's uh, back line. You're playing to a thousand. Um, and your little pieces that you shoot, it's, um, like whenever a little piece you shoot collides with a square of any size, um, it will change which direction it's going. Um, 
and so you're just kind of trying to hit the right squares at the right times to push the pieces across, the biggest pieces across the enemy lines and not uh, let yours get pushed across your lines. And apparently I do better at that game when I'm talking and paying absolutely no attention to the game. <laughs> paying too much attention. Hey, I'm not losing that badly yet. When I said it, you had 11 points. Oh, really? As I was saying, okay, one of your scores okay. went across I the see, line. I see. see, now you're defending yourself and you're getting your points back. <laughs> wow, this is an empty field. It really is. It's a pretty chaotic game and pretty hard to coherently, um, Describe any like high level strategies. <laughs> <laughs> strategies are go up and down and hit the guys. Um, there are some things to think about. Um, like, for instance, the fact that as soon as you've hit a block, if there's no enemy ones coming for it, then it's useless to send more after it, unless it's like setting up for something in the future. So often it's good to sort of turn around as soon as you've shot one that's gonna collide with the edge of a piece. Um, but that's like, I don't know. It's hard to think about and not always true. And when I'm when I'm shooting one and I like to, and I, I mean when I'm shooting one and I'm gonna want to send follow up ones for it, I'll like wiggle up and down on it. Right. Yeah, I I agree with that. Um, I guess uh, largely because um, things can just sort of randomly in the middle like that decide to go vertically instead. Well, they go vertically. Do they go vertically when they, we've they each been hit? hit the same amount of times kind of I don't, get hit I at the same time or something? I don't something? think it's deterministic, but it does have to okay, do with yeah. being hit back with those yeah. being hit down. Um, why am I beating you so much while I'm talking about this game when I like have way less than 50% win rate normally? Because I'm listening, maybe. I, I maybe. <laughs> Okay, I guess I'm not winning this time. Maybe? No, you're not. Okay. There's no chance, right? That's right, not wait. You get these wait. across. Yeah, 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 it could happen. Go. Oh my god! I did it! Oh my god! 990. <laughs> wow, the closest game. Um, okay, Hostile Pantograph. Maybe is... we should look at the instant replay to see <laughs> if it was a legitimate thing. <laughs> um, okay, uh,. So, in this game, you- I think we should show it. Um, you're drawing a maze, um, in your color, on your side. You can't cross the middle line. Um, and then as it as your maze crosses the middle line, the enemy has to go through it. Um, and you can't touch the wall, so you die like that. Um, and when you die, um, it makes a big vertical segment, which makes it easy for your enemy in that place, because large open space is not a mess. Oh, I wasn't paying attention to which way I had to <laughs> Me talking is clearly how I should, I should just cast all our games when we, when we play normally, and then I'll win, because you'll be listening. <laughs> Actually, it was because I was- Oh god, okay, so the other thing that has happened there, that's a good demonstration, is that the further towards your back edge you are, the faster it scrolls for your opponent. Um, and that was what got me, was he moved backwards suddenly, and I was unable to keep up. Wow, I'm gonna run into the wall. Okay, that's a pretty good strategy to make me win. Um, I didn't think I had that one. Yeah, we should. Look, it's right on the instant replay. <laughs> um, I don't know, I don't have too much else to say about this one. Um, it's one of the, like, most kind of minute pressing the button skill matters ones. Like, you have to just move really quickly between narrow paths and not screw up. Yeah. And that's basically the whole game. Um, it's probably the one that we've... Well, there's, there's deciding on how aggressive you want to be. Like, you yeah. can try to make, you can try to take the turns tighter to make it harder for the other player, or you can play it safer, which is going to leave the other player a safer turn. Hector Gorgon? Um, right, so the, the kind of the thing, um, that he was mentioning about, um, 
trying to make things tighter or to him playing riskily is that you can see that it's kind of like a it pulsates how wide the line you're drawing with is. Um, so you can, if you're good, you can try to be careful. And now the time covered against me. Um, you can try to cause the narrow portion of your line to coincide with the sharp turn, which will then be harder for them to get through. Um, so that is another part of the strategy. It's a little bit tricky to learn how to take advantage of that. Um, Yeah, that happens. It happens a lot that a death or a respawn, due to the sudden deceleration or acceleration from them not being there at all, to suddenly being there or the other way around, um, catches up to you. Star of the show. There's, there's one other thing um, in Hostile Pantheon. Oh, yeah? You, we don't remember what makes you go faster. There's like, you go faster based on how far to the right, and one other thing that we don't remember. Because, like, that final death was absurd yeah. speed. Yeah, I think Michael did explain that to us, and I forgot what it is also. Maybe it's just I'm alive? Like, it speeds up over time? Yeah. Maybe. Um. Anyway, um, maybe for Glitch Tank we should, like, play kind of turn-based a bit to describe what's going on. I was going to say maybe for Glitch Tank we should let people read what's <laughs> been happening. Like, go, yes, go reading, back. Reading the oh, it, it doesn't start over. It doesn't start over. Reading the instructions for Glitch Tank is a wonderful, is a wonderful thing to do. Um... And this is also the only compendium game that um, Michael has released for uh, iOS. Um, you can buy it separately, and it's pretty unambiguously a better game on iOS with tap controls rather than keys. Um, but sadly, we do not have any iOS devices from which to stream. Um, so, you have the four arrow keys. Hit go and, and don't play. Okay. Um, there's no timer, so... Um, and so when you start out, you just have this tank, um, and you have your four directions mapped to essentially a card. Um, if you played Robo Rally, it's kind of a similar concept. Um, and when you use one, um, it gets replaced with a random other card. Um, so the options are that was a move forward, here's a jump two, rotate left, rotate right. Backwards. Leave a bomb. Yep, yep, move forward and leave a bomb. Um, and then there's also, let's cycle through some stuff. Okay, I have to myself up here. So bombs explode in a little plus area radius. Okay, now you have a laser going to me. I was going to demonstrate that um, jump two damages things yes. that jumps over. Yes. Um, and then there's also lasers which do damage and are like a top card that I had there. Um, and this is the exciting one. Um, make a little mini tank copy of yourself. Um, and mini tanks follow all the instructions that you are given, including, notably, making four mini tanks. So I now use two make a mini tank cards, and I have four total tanks because my mini tanks that I made the first time, I made another one. Um, Meanwhile, I have jammed myself <laughs> up against the walls. <laughs> <laughs> that is the thing that can happen. And I will continue to amass my army, which is hidden entirely behind my mind. Look at this! Like, they're completely trapped! 
Also remember that mini tanks can shoot. Yes, all your stuff can hurt yourself. There is massively friendly fire, um, and it is kind of chaotic. Um, oh, I, I think that would have also killed you. If, yes. And I could have demonstrated the tie mode. Oh, yeah, let's yeah. demonstrate the tie mode. That might be hard to accomplish in time. I was just cycling until so I got good stuff, but... Okay, so... Oh, I shot you? Yeah. I meant to hit a different button, but it didn't shoot you. Yeah, it's okay, I was gonna... Okay, I've got a lot of guys that'll so... Okay, okay. it's not you and myself, so okay, I've taken so two damage. And I've taken one. <laughs> yeah. Can I sh I actually would... Hold on, no, I wouldn't you shoot, shoot anyone. anyone. I, well, I have to do it. Amazing. I have to do it. Yeah. Um. Oh, whoops, oh whoops. sorry. No, that was me. Oh. I jumped like a little guy into a mine, which blew up my main guy. Um. Anyway, when you when you both die at the same time, you just both spawn in a random new place um, with one health each. And um, with the number of mini tanks that you had. Yes. Um, there is, there are a couple other really rare cards that can show up, um, which probably just, like, those are fun and confusing to be fun and confused by. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Hey, look, we're exactly even yeah, in this, our demonstration game. Yeah, like, just like how we shouldn't demonstrate the secret game. I don't know, shouldn't we? I don't think so. I don't think we should? No. Okay. I think it's better to leave it as a mystery. Okay, let's play this for real now. Okay, sure. Yourself. Wow, <laughs> I was pretty useless that whole game. <laughs> um, okay. Play again. Okay. No. Ah, it's too late. Oh, I turned first. I meant to press right and not down. Oh that's, well, that's fine. Best that's, game. This is the best one. Maybe. Um, it's one of the... It may be the deepest strategically, pretty easily, I guess. Yeah. Um, you wanna describe it before you start or you wanna start? Uh, let's just start because it's... Yep. You run around and suck up resources. And then you get two spells on the right. And you can hit right or left to cast them. Like, I just cast Suction there, which gives me increased sucking power. Here, I'm gonna summon a tank. They just run around and occasionally shoot. Um, and the cards you have, or the spells you have, um, work kind of similarly to Glitch Tank, except when you use one, they both get randomized. Um, also so you when can't you really store things up. Also, when you die, they both get randomized. And that's the thing under the player 1, player 2, those are lives. Um, lives also occasionally spawn. Um, this is a laser, which is usually really good and an almost guaranteed kill, but I missed it completely. Um, As did I. Yeah. Um, so here's a neat little trick. This is a seeker, um, and if I'm good, which I am, thankfully, um, I can let it explode on the edge of me and not die. But in the meantime, I picked up a life. Yes. 
so, um, the resources, okay, do we go over the two different kinds of resources and, like, how costs work? I guess it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, like, any, anything that's, anything that's just a spell costs only orange, but anything that makes a unit costs orange, costs some number of orange, including zero, plus a blue. It's like, shield is one in a blue, tank is zero in the blue because they just run around mostly. Um, turret is two and a blue. Also, all the units uh, spawn in a predetermined order, like it's an orange and then a blue and then three oranges and then a blue. And so if you know what part of the cycle you're in, you can know when to expect the one up. Which occurs at the end of the cycle. Um, I don't think that's actually true. I think it occurs kind of in the middle of the cycle. Uh, if you start by the if you count by the beginning of the end, you can just as well say it's at the end. Maybe that's why I always get confused and know off when the cycle is. Yeah. Oh, you're a seeker. That's good that I noticed. I really thought it was the other kind. Um, maybe I should cast some spells someday. Here's I just have one. all these resources. <laughs> Oh yeah, also fireballs and, um, lasers can destroy resources. So if you're not going to get the one up, you can at least blow it up. Um, so, another advanced tactic in addition to this thing I keep doing. Speakers, except I screwed it up. Damn it. Um, is saving up a shield in your inventory when you know that they are working towards the laser, and then uh, the laser gives enough warning when they start firing it that you can drop the shield instantly wherever they're shooting it at you and block it. Um, which is a pretty important it feels really overpowered before you figure out how to do that. Um, and so Seeker will... Um, it's not, like, totally useless because of that trick, because it will prioritize the closest unit. Um, so that trick is only really useful if you don't have anything else. I mean, Seekers are also useful because they give you a minigame to play that can oh, um, distract you from resources or force you to run into other fire. We haven't talked about Nuke at all. Um, oh yeah, or even used it. Uh, um, so, Nuke destroys every unit on the screen and replaces it with a random resource. Um, which often means that the person, like, you obviously want to use it when your opponent has lots of stuff and you have very little, like right now. Um, but, you know, that means all of all those resources spawn really near to the opponent. Um... God. I can die too. Wow. I'm impressed. Um... So there is a, a significant cost to using the move, but it can put you behind on these characters in the short term. Especially because it costs five, which is pretty expensive. That tank! Yeah, he's been around for a while, hasn't he? Oh my god. He's got a white skin. That's the other reason Seekers are good. Okay. Finally, I win in a group and struggle today. Um. I think that's sufficient for that game. Yeah, I think so. Anything else that's a pretty long one. Um. Any game About it. March Eternal. That was nice, right? Yeah. Um, this game's weird. Um, you get to control, so you have like automatically spawning little like kind of RTS units things, but you have no direct control over them. You only have this thing called a support beam, which as you can see from the instructions, you can move left and right with the left and right arrow keys. 
Um, and you can, you have two of them. So one you're just, is, you're directly controlling at all times. Um, and then you can drop one by pressing down and it will just stay there, stationary, and you can move around with the other one. And if you um, drop, if you drop another I think second... We should hit enter and demonstrate what the hell we're talking about. Okay. So this, this line moves back and forth, I can hit down and leave it there. And if you um, hit down again, it picks up the old one and puts it where you right. left. Um, and when your units are in a support beam, they're glowy, um, and that means they're stronger. Um, they'll fight better. Like, they'll just walk forward generally and automatically attack. The other thing is these little um, dots appear. I don't know what they're called. Little resources of some kind. Um, and your uh, little walking guys will um, suck them up while they are in a support beam. And then that little bar fills to destruction. Like that. Up, um, and kill all and all units, not all enemies, all units that are under Be careful not to use it on your own guys. Um, and each unit is worth a different amount of points when it crosses the enemy back row. Um, and you're trying to get to 100. One thing to, to be aware of in that game is that um, you the support beam does not have to be on the resource. It has to be on the guy who's... Oh, it says my in the stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's why I did it, yeah. Um, and that one, I guess, means that it's AoE, the mecha. What did it say about it? It says attacks all the time. Yeah, oh, yeah, I guess um, so. The weak units are the only ones that can be charged to be in the yeah. um, What I was saying is that it doesn't have to be on the dot, it has to be on the guys, and they have a pretty decent range. So you can put your sword in quite a ways ahead or behind of the thing that it's sucking up for your um, destruction beam. Um, and still have it work, which can be important. Okay, Aura at Labora. This game was crazy. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, in this game, you charge things, and there are 15 
different squares. We should just start and just yep, run around. I and I'll completely explain. agree. So I'm the blue thing, and when I'm standing on a thing, its blue bar fills up, and then when it's full, I cast it, and they'll do different things. Um, like here, I'm gonna send the fireball at him. Where's the where'd you put? Oh, yeah, the fireballs over. He's sending fireballs at me right now. Actually. You can see um, on the bottom of the screen it says the name of the square that you're standing on. Um, so, like, mine is always in the left bottom, and his is always in the right bottom, regardless of where we are on the screen. Um, also, when you, um, stand on four distinct squares in a row, then, I'm not sure quite how the in a row is ruled, but, um... Uh, just, like, there's a counter of distinct ones. And, right? Pretty sure that's how it works. Okay, and then... If, when that hits four, you get an acolyte, which is like a mini version. You can of you. see uh, there's like two, two of my acolytes are, are bouncing around yeah, on the right side of the right screen. Um, there's still one alive, and they just sort of wander around autonomously and fill things up slowly. Um, so they're pretty good, um, which is uh, it's, that's like the major force for diversifying what you do. Otherwise, you would just kind of like stand on the best square forever. Um, the other force for that is drinking the square I'm on right yes. now, which upgrades all of you, your units. Except that if you have too many of a single type of unit, you'll only choose a few of them to upgrade. So I guess let's go through what the squares are going. So this one I'm on taming makes little dogs. Um, they bounce around like a window screensaver, um, and they do decent damage. Um, this one up in the here carving makes these golem things um, that just go back and forth in a straight line. Um, You're making too many things. I'm not gonna live through the explanation. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hey, I'm just standing one square over and over again. You should be able to beat that. It's not even a good strategy. Um, so right now I'm standing on attacking, um, which, as you saw, caused my um, my taming dogs and carving golems to deviate from their set path um, and um, go towards enemy units, is what attacking does. And it so, even makes trees step one square yes, towards it does. the enemy. It's only the enemy player, not enemy units. Yeah, you're right, sorry. Um, so then praying, um, this, oh wow, I got another one, cool. Praying has a chance, when you fill it up, of creating this huge avatar, and they're super scary and huge, and you have a slightly better chance of getting one if you are way behind on health and Yeah, I got, I got one, it's that big scary thing. Um, and if I run into it, I will might lose the game. Let's um, stand on resting for a while and get our health That's back. a pretty good idea. So, next one, resting. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's pretty straightforward, you fill it up and you get a little bit of health back. Um... So then these two that are diagonal to each other here, drinking and rest uh, and reading, um, are sort of opposites. Reading increases your future units power. Um, so you can see this golem thing has like got crenellations on the top now, um, and is like bigger. That means that it has been upgraded, um, either by me reading a bunch first or by me drinking a bunch after it was created. Um, I do not know totally the rules for reading. Um, I don't know like how long it lasts, or, like how many of your future units it applies to, and how much it stacks. And I don't actually know the rules. Um, do you know the rules I better than I me? Don't, I don't yeah. know the rules. Yeah. Um, it seems good to do it some amount of times. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're a lot on health again. Yeah. It should be um. worse. <laughs> Um, so when that, you started doing this thing, you had a big lead, so I had yeah. to actually play well. Yeah. Um, the one at the bottom there that looks like a tree makes these trees that you can see everywhere. I can make some trees. Yeah. Um, trees just sit there and hurt enemy units that step on them. Um, they're pretty solid. Um, trees are also one of the two things, or one of three things, I guess, in this game that distinguishes the player's sides from each other at all. Um, the other, so your trees are more likely to spawn on your half of the map, as you can see there's a bunch of blue trees on the right and uh, a few <laughs> yellow trees on the left. Um, the other two things that make the sides distinct from each other um, is that your acolytes come from your side and you spawn in your corner. Um, but other than that, you hear, like, there's no ownership of squares at all. You can see each one has a bar for each of us. Um, 
on the appropriate side. Um, I actually made too many acolytes, and they're just summoning each yeah. other now. That's yeah. So even if I, I guess I could, anything. I could kill them. Um, I guess I can't kill them while your acolyte just killed me. Okay. Yeah, because um, I was standing on drinking for a while. Oh wow. Yeah. Once you were done talking, I was going to explain how drinking works on trees and demonstrate mm. that because I had too many trees, it only grew a few of them. Right. Okay. Let's just go back in. Yeah. Yeah. the last few. Um, I guess we didn't talk about casting. It's pretty straightforward. Also, it makes this little fireball thing which explodes and hits everything in a little X. And it chases nearby units, but other than that, it just goes um, diagonally. Yeah. Um, I guess there's a couple other details, which is that, for instance, right after you drinking, you go blinky a little bit. Um, which you can see lets me walk through enemy units without taking damage, so that's actually a pretty good thing. Um, and attacking does that too. You also do damage. For example, I'm oh, killing right. his acolyte right. right now. You do damage. That's not because of the blankiness. That's just, by default, you fight things that you're on top of. Um, and generally, you want to avoid fighting things, but it can be a good idea with your fall, if you're at full health to fight enemy acolytes because they don't really have a lot of... Um, like, they're not for attacking you back, they're just for gathering resources for the enemy, so they don't hurt that much. Um, and also, if you're at totally full health, and you're gonna end up standing on a resting, um, it can actually be, like, beneficial to take out an acolyte and take a little bit of damage so the resting actually does something. Um, and that is this game. It certainly takes a little time to figure out what the hell is going on with all these random symbols and names of things, but it's pretty worth it. Um, it it's pretty, pretty fascinating game. I enjoy entries. Okay. <laughs> you already made it bigger. <laughs> What is it? I'm Lighting. forgetting. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Of course. Is it really rare? It's I, the rarest of I them. guess it is. I, I guess. think the other ones are all guaranteed. There might be a couple of the unit ones that aren't guaranteed, but... No, they definitely are. We... I... The dog I'm pretty sure I've... I don't think so. I think we've had one without carving. No, like... that's, that's what I'm saying. I guess those are out of here. Oh, okay. But I think laying is rare. Isn't yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, yeah. Laying um, is a little picture of an egg. It makes, when you fill it up, it makes these pretty weak little eggs. Um, they don't really do anything, and they can die quite easily. But then, if you stand on drinking, they turn into super awesome birds that fly around and kill everything. Um, and that's what laying is. Yeah, and in the previous version, the birds were even stronger, and that was just how you won. Was by making a bunch of birds. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yep, I am ready. Did you explain farming? Oh, we totally didn't explain farming. <laughs> farming is the most important square in the game. Um, so, as you can see, I started on it, um, and when I fill it up, it makes two little things. I like to think of them as sheep. Other people seem to think that they are not sheep. Um, I don't even is, think that they're alive. It is a question for the ages. Um, but regardless, they wander about kind of vaguely following you if they're close enough, um, and they give you a nearly full fill on whatever you're standing on, except for farming itself, um, if you hit them while you are on a square. Well, you're always on a square. If you hit them, they give you a huge amount of, of filling up of whatever you're square. They're just not consumed if you're on farming. Right. Um... And they are a pretty big boost to your like ability to fill things up quickly and thus make accolades quickly. Oh wow, that was a huge pile of uh, two avatars. I'm talking, paying no attention, and you meanwhile stacked two avatars on top of each other. That is not even fair. It's a fair. Uh, what is happening? I'm pretty lucky. <laughs> That's absurd. I've never seen that before. What? I think that was three out of my last four. Four avatars. That's crazy. 
Um, I guess that compensates for me starting on farming pretty well. <laughs> um, I didn't start far from on farming. Okay, yeah. Um, that's Aura at Labora. Um, we do not play Twilight Beacon yet, this but this the is the last one. one. You want to explain? Um, sure. You charge up shots. Um, it, I mean, it charges up automatically, like if you're not hitting a button. And then, if you hit left, it fires the shot. Like, so my thing is my thing is fully charged. It won't get any bigger the longer. Right? And then I can shoot it off. And if I hold it down, I'll just shoot tiny ones. And the longer I wait, the bigger it gets. Shooting a bunch of small ones. Uh -huh. And then this thing that's spawned in the middle here is power up. If I get it, my block turns blinky green, and now it kills everything. And normally, when, when things impact each other, um, who dies is random. Um, and also you can see the big one getting smaller, like my little ones are have the random chance to shrink it a certain amount. And um, have the random chance to kill it. Right. Um, and so it's random based on the relative sizes of the two things. Oops. <laughs> um, so a big one is more likely to kill a small one. A small one is fairly unlikely to kill a big one, but it absolutely can happen. Um, and yeah, you try to get a hundred or okay. Oh, so the other thing is that each one is that regard unlike in Zeta Forge, regardless of the size. We're not well, not regardless of the size. Almost. But almost regardless of the size, things are worth like the, the number of points things are worth is roughly the same. Um, like really big ones are like four or something. Yeah, it scales from one to four. Yeah, so it's not at all worth your time to like charge up big ones to try to get them across for points, um, but it is worth your time to charge up big ones to try to kill lots of little ones. Um, and that is the fundamental issue of the game. I think I was going to. Yeah, but I would have followed it up. That's yeah, that's matter. true. Also a secret game, which apparently we're not going to show you. Um, but we it, should play a tournament. Yeah, yeah, we should. We should. So the best, the best way to play Compendium is in tournament mode. Um, it's first to five, and a random player goes first. And you get given three options. Choose one, and then from then on, the loser is given three options. To choose this one. Um, and yeah, it's a good way to play to make sure you, you know all the different ones sometimes. Um, what on earth do I choose? Let's just play that much. The background on the stream looks like really white and yeah, not the that's same. Bizarre. Yeah. The background in real life is like pastel -y, different shades of colors. And that's gonna turn that way, it's just because the stream's earlier. Oh you're right, right. The background gets drawn on by the blocks in some interesting way. Cause Michael's amazing. Um Wow, I'm not getting as destroyed as I felt like I was. That's because I was distracted by the background, too. Now I am pretty much getting distracted. That's, that'll teach you to stop talking and concentrate <laughs> on the game. What you think? Thank <laughs> you. 
I did not vic vic go sank today. I can't play it. Um, Oh my god, I'm so bad. I thought I was amazing and then I wasn't. I got my third orange resource, which I thought was my fourth orange resource, and, and raced up to kill you and the mm -hmm. health, and then actually I cast uh, the wrong thing. Yeah. Good to look at what your opponent has. Basic strategy tip for all you viewers out there. Shield. Oh. I didn't die. I don't know why I panicked so much. Did they die? No. No, I could have if I was better. Oh, 
how fast can you? Oh my god. Bomb, 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 bombs? Yeah. Oh, bomb. What is the damage I just took? How? I can't understand. I've never taken that damage in one second. Wow. So here you can see the overpowered strategies that I came up with a couple of days ago. Where you just... I killed your big one I was on top of it before I actually was there. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. Um... Hey, what's your last choice? Yes, it's alright. I don't know more, because I can actually win at this game. You can win at March of Turtle. That's true. But not with any regularity, or, like, because I did anything right. Like finish though. 
I guess I should probably make an army and like actually use attacking. I'm really bad at using attacking. I never do it.